Live from San Francisco, California, it's The Cube at VMworld 2014. Brought to you by VMware, Cisco, EMC, HP, and Nutanix. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Dave Vellante. Hey, welcome back everyone, live in San Francisco, California. This is theCUBE, VMworld 2014, our fifth year covering VMworld. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Dave Vellante. Um, Sanjay Poonin, the EVP and General Manager of End User Computing, uh, friend of theCUBE, he's been on uh, throughout his career at SAP, then he moves right across the street to uh, VMware last year. And uh, great to see you, great to, great to see you back in theCUBE. Thank you, John, it's a pleasure to be here. What a year, right? So <laughs> last year, you came on board, guns blaring, Pat was really excited. You accomplished some of your goals. I think you laid out, I said, what's your goals for next year? <laughs> you laid out some goals, and then big acquisition, AirWatch, security's hot, mobile is booming. We are living in a multi-cloud, mobile infrastructure demand. Tell us, what happened over the past year? Obviously, big M&A, give us the details. You know, John and Dave, I, I, I was like on day, like, point five, day one, when I came on your <laughs> cube, and I was actually watching the replay, and I'm like, I actually said that, and it made sense? Uh, no, it's been a great year, and it's really been a team effort. So the first thing that I did was, uh, I said, you know, well before we decide the what and the how, I really want to figure out who's on the bus. So we really uh, both kind of promoted a couple of key people within the company, uh, like Kit Colbert. You remember Kit was like the star of last year's show. He's now our CTO and user computing. We hired a couple of rock stars from the industry, like Sumit Dhawan and a few others, who really come in and shaped us. And then as the team started to gel, we then began to ask our customers, what was the key missing part in our strategy? And it was mobile, it was very clear. And we began to then ask ourselves, listen, if we're going to get into the mobile space, you know, do we build, do we buy, do we partner? And we were winning deals in the desktop space, primarily against Citrix, we compete uh, in there, getting a lot of market share, but the mobile space, we'd lose deals. And I go and ask our customers, who, who are you picking? And 80, 90% of the time was AirWatch. Same time, our CIO was doing an evaluation internally. We were running on an SMB tool, FiberLink, that then since got bought by IBM. We're running out of steam with it because it's an SMB tool. And I said, listen, you evaluate the market, look at the, all, all the options, and based on what you pick will probably influence our acquisition decision. They love AirWatch, too. So, you know, those were two or three key moments. It's in the, the franchise year. player in, in the team, right? I mean. <laughs> ultimately, <laughs> ultimately, you know, mobile is today kind of that sizzle point. If you're talking mobile cloud, it is the sizzle point. John Marshall and Alan DeBerry came in, they've added a lot. So, you know, I talked in my keynote about three core pillars, desktop, mobile, content collaboration. We really feel like today, when I was looking back, we had a tenth of the portfolio last year this time. And I think, you know, lots of good vision, but now we actually have vision and substance, which right. I think is pretty powerful. So is it the Le LeBron James, who was the, is it the Tom Brady, is it the Ray Allen, you know, the, the key you know, the role player, I, what is it? I the love Watch? basketball, all those teams yeah. are great. I think <laughs> some of my favorite are all the Phil Jackson teams. Yeah. My role is really to be the coach and to bring into the, the construct the Michael Jordan, the Scottie Pippins, you know, all that construct so that when you put together a world-class team, I really believe we have the best end user computing team in the industry, bar none. And uh, this team really is now packed with people and process and product innovation. Uh, and that's what you've seen the last 12 months. It's a real tribute to this fantastic end user computing team. Sanjay, talk about the uh, news this morning around uh, SAP. Um, we didn't catch the details that we were on the, uh, on the cube here. Can you just take us through some of those, some of those uh, key highlights? I mean, clearly I have a soft corner for SAP, <laughs> as you'd expect. I was there for seven years and I have a tremendous respect. They are the leader in business applications, a tremendous player, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of customers, uh, and what we felt was, if you could marry the best of breed aspects of what SAP does well, applications, mobile applications, cloud applications, on-premise applications, all of that, with what we do very well, which is management and security for mobile, and that's what our customers have. Among the 13,000 customers of AirWatch, probably the biggest base in the enterprise are SAP customers. And they've been longing for better integration and you know a little bit about what's going on over there. We, you know, we <laughs> talked to you about. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, you know. we want to do what's best for customers. Yeah. You know, so Pat, Bill McDermott, myself talked, Kevin Chaprani, who was on stage, and we felt that we could build integration between the mobile apps and the mobile platform of SAP, where SAP is very good, with the management and security of AirWatch, where we're very good. You get the combination of two best of breed. And I think the customer quote in that press release put it well. Silji Abraham basically said, he was a CIO of Sigma Aldrich, 
we love the fact that you're bringing together the best of breed aspects of mobile security from AirWatch with mobile apps and mobile platform and SAP. And that's in essence so what So App you're Store doing. for the enterprise becomes a reality because the, the challenge people were having is it was, take, it was too hard, it was taking too long. So how does that change now with this integration? I mean, in essence, Air, what AirWatch provides is an elegant, simple, cloud-centric mobile management security solution for much more than MDM. Device management, mm -hmm. app management, mm -hmm. content management, and you know, in every ranking by the analyst, they are the undisputed oh, yeah. gold medal. Now you can basically use that solution uh, and make sure that your applications also work. So let's say you're bringing up, we showed in the demo, an example of SAP medical records, or maybe SAP Fiori, or Cyclo, or whatever have you. You can now bring that up on a device that's secure and the posture is checked with AirWatch. And that's the best combination of both. And so this could this apply to any application. It could be uh, a box, it could be our own content locker. SAP is a, clearly the leader in business applications. So I saw a tweet recently and said, uh, VMware working with Apple and United Airlines to bring mobility to airplanes, all secured by AirWatch. Obviously, United Airlines, big customer, uh, GE, and other things. So the interface to pretty much everything, whether it's big data, is going to be some mobile or edge device. Um, is that the number one requirement that you're hearing from customers that it's not just mobile users, is the Internet of Things part of this? How do you see that? I mean, that's an interesting piece. Is that, is that true? No, guys... absolutely. I think well, I talked about the United Airlines case study. In fact, it's right off the website of Apple. If you go to Apple and look at the business case studies they have, United Airlines is one of those case studies. And the, the case study is actually pretty simple. You know, you got these pilots that are lugging around 30, 40 pound bags, it's lots of paper manuals, their flight landing instructions. Now those are being digitized with iPads in the cockpit. So as you think about what the future is, everything goes digital. That first invades the cockpit, then the flight attendants have it so they can check to make sure they have a list of the passengers and they can serve their passengers better. Uh, and that's the way the world is moving. But then you take that same concept and you extend this now to machines, where every single potential machine that is on the internet can be tracked, can be managed and secured. And our proposition there is to manage and secure every possible machine and thing, and then analyze the data coming out of that. And we think that's a huge opportunity. I hosted a panel with Jeff Melt uh, in Chicago last year, and the chairman of United told me a 1% savings in efficiency, uh, just, on, just on, uh, on gas, is billions of dollars of, of real savings. So you know, this brings back down to the, the whole concept. It's not just an IT thing. It's a business process thing. So how, how far along are you seeing the customer base on things like this? Is it, is where IT is, okay, IT, you got workers out there, you know, bring your own device to work. Okay, but outside of that, what is the, the uptake, if you will, on really connected intelligence? Yeah, I think it's, a, it's and when we have, you know, 13,000 customers that we've had, their watch, 50,000 odd customers with Horizon, 500,000 customers that we have at VMware, many of them start speaking, and we're finding in a couple of industries in consumer packaged goods and retail industries. People are looking at things like, for example, smart vending. In devices, medical devices, the future of it's protected. Medtronics was on stage, and they are an AirWatch customer. They were talking about the fact that their vision is well beyond just the mobile devices. Every medical device is being protected potentially by AirWatch. You look at oil and gas customers, practically almost every oil and gas customer is an AirWatch customer. There's going to be embedded intelligence uh, inside a lot of the oil and gas machinery yeah. and infrastructure that protects people from potential damage. We expect to be able to secure that. So our proposition in that equation is the management and security of every machine and everything. And then the beautiful part of it is beyond just management and security, I think the analytics of data coming out of that is a treasure trove of incredible, valuable places for big data. You know, we spoke with Bill McDermott when you were also at uh, SAP, and they had a very vertical approach, and when we go to talk about the big data conferences with theCUBE, everyone's, oh, this vertical, usually they have to have a vertical niche to kind of be a major player, or, 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 or even a differentiated niche player, but how does that affect your business? Is it verticalized? Uh, you mentioned oil and gas, talking about, you know, <laughs> you know, airlines. Is there a horizontal platform that can work across the industries, or is it specifically verticals? Do you see at your levels, now you're at a different, you're at the edge of the network. What's your take on that? Do you have to be a vertical player, or is there a horizontal play there? That's a great question, John. I think that as the world's lead, fastest growing and biggest infrastructure software company, VMware, that's what we've been going from zero to, you know, roughly run rate six billion in, in 15 years, there is fundamentally, first off, a horizontal play that goes across and cuts across many industries. But very quickly, we find as we are able to package solutions by industries. Uh, so I talked, for example, at the keynote about the healthcare industry and how we were, you imagine a doctor walking into their office, 
moving from their office to the ward, from their desktop to an iPad to potentially getting into the room and they then have a thin uh, terminal, uh, client terminal, and then they collaborate with their other doctor that has uh, you know, an, uh, an iPad too. Healthcare is one example. State and uh, the local public sector is a different uh, example where we're being successful. Education, retail, manufacturing. We picked four or five verticals. I've been fortunate in the fact that much of my experience at SAP was running the industries at SAP, so I have a good amount of experience at industry solutions. We're certainly not an applications player like SAP where we're going to verticalize in a vertical stack applications, but you're going to see us drive solutions. And when you drive industry solutions, and let's say five or 10 industries where we're relevant, you're going to see our average selling price grow. And that's, so that's really so the problem. So the differentiation is application specific, it tends to be vertical, but as a platform product player, you're this way. Yeah, you're that way fundamentally to start with, but then you start creating solutions, yeah. which are scenarios that work in a particular industry. To enable those guys. Right? Exactly. We hook, hook and we've in. picked okay. the five or 10 industries where we think we're going to go focus, and we're starting to see as we do yeah. that, our average selling price grows. And the other thing that happens is, one. yeah, you know, the other thing that happens is that you actually start becoming relevant to a line of business buyer beyond just IT, and that's very important. How about some of the performance metrics? Give us some data, can you share some, uh, Pat was glowing with, oh, that's really performing well. So can you share some numbers? Yeah, I'll tell you what we did the last three quarters in growth. This is the fastest growing, one of the fastest growing business units. In Q4 of last year, we grew 30%, north of 50, 30%. Uh, in, uh, in Q1, uh, of, of we announced that we grew north of 30% uh, again. And then in Q2, we said we grew north of 50%. 50% right. And now some yeah. of that was also the contribution of Airwatch, Airwatch but organic or inorganic, we are growing. And it's not a small business. You can grow from one to two and that's 100%. This is a sizable part of VMware's revenue and a growing part of it. We're talking and hundreds of millions of here, is that fair? Oh yeah, no, it's yeah. fair. I mean, yeah. you know, it's well over 10% of the company's yeah, yeah, right, revenue right, and right. growing percentage of the total company's revenue. I think that this is going to become an increasing part of VMware's total revenue, total relevance to the CIO, hence because of mobile cloud, and a big part of the brand appeal of VMware. I mean, listen, VMware is well known as an infrastructure company, done very well in the data center, but the moment you start talking mobile and cloud, you're appealing to the CIO, and that's a very different type of conversation. We want to raise the appeal of VMware and our brand appeal to the CIO, and we think mobile it's and cloud a, helps us get there. And it's a big market. You guys do the TAM analysis, Pat, that probably has you doing that, or whoever, maybe it's Jonathan, <laughs> but it's a big chunk of it, this EUC, you guys call a it. A sizable right? part, and, and bigger than it was before, and we just have to kind of grow into that TAM, and then grow the TAM further, and that's you know, and you're part starting, of our job. With that kind of growth, it sounds like getting the flywheel effect going. And the problem with VDI was always, you know, cost, 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 um, and you know, so it was in narrow niches. This mobile seems to change that whole discussion I mean, from uh, cost to value. Uh, uh, you know, David, it's a very good point. First off, mobile for us means more than just a device. It means being on the move, okay? And on the move means you could be on the move and you're using a laptop here. We got to think about the relevance of how you get solutions onto your laptop and desktop. I think part of the reason VDI kind of hit a little bit of a bump and some of our competitors have been stalling and declining is it's just too complex and too costly. And we fundamentally now reinvented a modern stack for desktop virtualization that runs on top of all the great innovation that we have in the software-defined data center, like Virtual SAN, okay, like vSphere, and a lot of the things we're doing. So all of a sudden, the cost of VDI, we can show, we take down by at least 30 to 40%. That's a game changer. Mm -hmm. Now you add mobile there to say, listen, when you go from a desktop or a laptop to a tablet or phone, you've got the leader in mobile security and management, AirWatch, integrated to Horizon, which is what we announced with the Workspace Suite. And the final pillar is being able to share that content in a very simple yet secure way. So think sort of Dropbox, but all of the security that SharePoint brought you. That's the third pillar. All three of those, desktop, mobile, and content, extremely powerful. So you're saying, Sanjay, the tipping point is the asset leverage that you're getting out of the infrastructure as you move toward this sort of sort of software-defined thing. That enables this type of decline in cost and accelerated growth. Absolutely, and that's you know the, 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 the whole aspect of how software has been done is you integrate things so you lower cost and you make it much, much easier to be able to pallet and buy. Now, either this could be bought on premise or in the cloud. So we're seeing that connection of you know, the head and the body. Think of the body being the traditional software-defined data center, the head being end user computing. All the connective tissue, muscle, fiber, blood vessels, and so on and so forth, making that connected now makes us a lot more appealing than telling a customer, listen, buy your data center infrastructure from VMware, your desktop infrastructure from Citrix, your mobile infrastructure from MobileIron, and your you know, content collaboration solution from like 10 different startups, mm -hmm. right? 
increasingly we think that that's not the way in which people are going to be buying software. Sanjay, just some highlights from the keynote, looking here on Twitter through our little listening tool. <laughs> um, great reviews, by the way. Electric flying speech, he's going to be CEO someday. Pat, heads up on that. That was coming from the Twitter. I didn't speech. say that. No, that was coming <laughs> from someone else. I had from somebody one else. career limiting move on stage when I said Pat ought to be thinking um, about an ice bucket challenge. So anyway. Great I, speaker, that was not amazing me. executive, really got really great reviews on the Twitter sphere. Um, besides uh, challenging Pat Gelsinger with the ice bucket challenge, of which Joe Tucci already challenged him, so <laughs> let's see how he responds to that. It's all done fun and game. All yeah. fun. In all seriousness, two quotes I want to pull out from the Twitter sphere. Um, you said, um, software in the modern car is more than the NASA spacecrafts. Uh, awesome comment, I want to pivot on that in a second. The other one was, um, Sanjay's emphasizing the importance of world-class infrastructure. So, First, define world-class infrastructure from your perspective, given your industry uh, experience and, and vision for the future. And two, talk about how it relates to the, the modern car versus NASA and, and, and the change of speed of technology. You know, John, when I gave my keynote, I put this beautiful picture of this incredible modern architecture in, in Singapore called the Marine, Marina Bay Sands Tower. It's three big towers, I think 40, 50, 60 floors, and a fantastic infinity swimming pool at the top of it. If you've not been to Singapore, you got to go there and check out the swimming pool at the top of it. But the only way in which you could make those three towers work was world-class foundational infrastructure. The three towers, by the way, was a metaphor to desktop, mobile, content <laughs> collaboration. And of course, the beautiful workspace view at the top of it. So the, for us, the infrastructure- and the stack also. Well, all of that <laughs> stuff, right? To us, the software-defined data center is the de facto infrastructure that makes a lot of that happen. We feel very, very fortunate and blessed to have the world's best infrastructure that makes that happen. Uh, virtual server, storage, networking, management, all of that put together allows me to be able to build world-class towers on top of that. And at the end of the day, it's not just solid, it's lower cost of ownership than the, op op uh, the opportunity. Now to my comment about the, the 1970s spacecraft, and so it's just to say that today we live in a software economy. It's not to say that hardware is not important, Okay. But someone joked that software is like the wine and hardware is like the bottle. Bottles are important, but the, the software glue really ties hardware together in a very special way. And that's really the genius of what's making everything, whether it's a device, whether it's a machine, even more relevant. And that clearly was defined in the 1970s as a spacecraft, but today you can see this invading automobile, thermostat, refrigerator, vending machine. That we believe is the future. So I got to ask you to shoot the arrow forward. What are you getting excited about? Obviously the accelerated pace of change from the spacecraft to the car. Obviously you mentioned United Airlines and Apple. It's well documented. Um, it's an end user environment. Certainly the interface is everything. Uh, and that seems to be the focus area. What's your view? What is exciting? Where's the inflection point enabling technology that you're watching uh, from the foundation all the way to the top? I mean, listen, I spent seven years uh, at SAP, primarily in the analytics and big data space, and then prior to that, another five years at companies like Informatica. And, and I've just, a, all my life has been about end users. And as we came in here, we coined this phrase, which is our big, broad vision. We want to allow end users to work at the speed of life. So if you think about your life in the consumer world, you don't lug around 300 CDs into your car. You have an iPod, you have an iPhone, you connect to the iCloud, and it's all seamlessly there. You watch a movie, you start off on Netflix, you go from San Francisco to New York to Barcelona, you may start and then stop you know, someplace else and you can, you can start exactly where you stop, house of cards or whatever have you watching. Enterprise software has been, unfortunately, hard to use, complex, hard to implement, and the more that we can make enterprise software simple, simple and secure, we tend to do the security part of it pretty good. We tend to do the simplicity part, so I think enterprise software companies can actually take a page out of the book of consumer software companies on the simplicity. Now the consumer companies could take a lesson out of the book from us in security. Yeah, totally true. And, but when you put simplicity yeah. and security together, you get magic. When you could put together control and choice together, you get magic. So it's not the consumerization of IT, which we all love, it's the IT of consumerization. <laughs> You could really flip that around, like DevOps, Ops, Dev. I mean, know, there's so. so many different plays and words that you could do, but yeah. that's exactly the way but we But I think, think that's a great point. Uh, Sanjay, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. Congratulations on, on a great keynote. Um, and thanks for coming and spending your valuable time with us uh, here on theCUBE, appreciate it. Um, we're live here in San Francisco. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break. Thanks, John.